as Christian women, we can be really awesome about taking care of things and making sure things get done. We know which kid needs the red cup, which kid needs their sandwich cut into triangles, and which kid refuses to eat sandwiches altogether. This is great because it allows us to take good care of the people that we love, but what happens when we cross the line from taking care of people to feeling like we need to take care of everything and we need to have everything done our way since we know what's best. Well, today we are talking to Shannon Popkin, author of the book, Control Girl, Lessons on Surrendering Your Burden of Control from Seven Women in the Bible. Shannon is sharing some great advice for what to look for to figure out if you might have an issue with control, why it's so important to address this issue, and how to know the difference between when we do need to step up and say something and when it's really just best to sit back and let things be because there is a difference. So if you think control might be an issue in your life, this is one episode I definitely don't want you to miss. All right, well today we are talking to Shannon Popkin, author of the book, Control Girl, Lessons on Surrendering Your Burden of Control from Seven Women in the Bible. I have to say, I met Shannon this summer at a conference and her she taught a session which was phenomenal. Um, but as soon as I saw her book, this was one that I knew I needed to read for myself and that I absolutely wanted to bring to you today. So thank you, Shannon, so much for agreeing to be on the podcast with us today. Hey, it's so great to be with you. Thanks for having me. Well, we know that the need for control is something I have dealt with plenty in my life, and I know that it's something that a lot of other people deal with too. Can you tell us a little bit just about your story and your background and how this came to be an issue that you even wanted to talk about in the first place? <laughs> well, I'm not sure that I do want to talk about it still, you know? <laughs> Who wants to be uh, called the control girl that... Um... I, I think I've stepped out just because, oh, the Lord has taught me so much, and I just want my sisters to enjoy the freedom that I'm finding through surrender versus control. Um, but, you know, I think if, if I go back and look at myself as a young wife, um, or if I take a step even further back as a single woman, I... Um, I didn't realize I had any control issues. <laughs> I think probably because I could manage my life and keep things pretty, you know, uh, tidy the way that I wanted them. And then I got married, and my husband had different ideas about how things should um, go in our home and in our lives. And um, like, I'll just give you a little example. One time, um, or early in marriage, we had a little table beside our couch and he would sit there and read his like book or whatever and there was a lamp in the middle of this table well he was constantly pulling the lamp over next to uh where he was sitting and i like no that was not okay with me so i was constantly like i'd walk in the room and like ah you know and try and move it back into the center of the table because Aesthetically, it looked better in the middle. It didn't. It looked off center when he would pull it over toward his chair. So we just were doing this tug of war for like months with this stupid lamp, and you know, little things like that. Like I was trying to control everything, and you know, just kind of creating tension in our marriage. Well, then we started having children, and um, we got a house, and you know, pets, and just our lives started getting more complex with more going on, and my control issues started just really mushrooming. One of the, the um, just kind of epiphany moments for me was when in Bible study, I asked the women in my group to share a prayer request uh, about a relationship struggle that they were having. And every single woman that day shared about a really controlling older woman in her life, either a mom or a mother-in-law or a different woman. And, um, and so I, I leaned into that circle and I said, how do we not become them? Because I could see myself becoming exactly like these little stories that I've heard. And I don't think these women are trying to be a burden to their family. And so that, you know, that's really what started me down a journey of like, I want to go in a different direction. I want to start now practicing this habit of surrender rather than giving just vent to this desire that I have for control. So once you realize that this was a problem in your life and something that you needed to address, 
what were your first steps in kind of doing something about it? Like, how did that journey get started? Yeah, sure. So, um, I would say, let me just explain to you, like, how God opened my eyes to my control issues. I, I knew, I didn't realize control was a problem, but I did know that I had some anger issues. And so, um, I was reading books about anger, and I was asking my friends to pray for me and hold me accountable, and, and I, um... I was riding in the car one day listening to the radio and uh, Dee Breston was on the radio and she's talking about how sometimes we have these surface level sins in our lives that, that we can see and then there are these underlying uh, sins, these, these core sins that are feeding the, the sins at the surface and she mentioned the sin of control and linked that with anger and I thought, oh my goodness. I see that connection in me because anger is what's rising to the surface and it's being fed by this deep core craving that I have for control. Um, and so anger is something that, that shows up and also anxiety, you can look for anxiety, that's another surface level thing that's often fed by a desire for control. But then anxiety was more related to like the things in the future that I couldn't control or the things that it felt like it was unraveling. Or, you know, my perfectionism too was like something that would, would come to the surface and I was aware of it. I was, I would like obsess over, I don't know, just like keeping my house or um, how my kids behaved or appearances or just different things like that. And so for me, one of the first steps in, um, in looking at this issue with control was recognizing it, you know, like calling it a name. I think there's power in like giving this problem a name. It's, it really is something, I mean, I don't know if you've recognized this, Brittany, but it's something that we don't really talk very much about. Um, we don't, like, it's not a label that we give ourselves usually. Like, I don't think I have ever, let me ask you this, Brittany. Have you ever been in a Bible study group or a small group where somebody says, hey, you know, would you pray for me because I'm really controlling. I really struggle with control. No, never. I have been told by my husband, not in so many words, but that I need to stop being so controlling. Um, and it was a thing where I was like, I'm not controlling. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I'm just trying to do what's best for my family. I'm not a controlling person. So I think it's definitely uh, something we don't always realize or talk about. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, that's been my experience too. I never considered myself controlling. I was very invested. You know, I had such good intentions and I think I was thinking more about, you know, well, I'm, I'm ha I have everyone's best in mind. If you will just listen to me and do it the way that I'm saying, it will all turn out right. And so, but I think there's really power in just looking for it underneath the surface, like looking for the problem, asking yourself when you see these other things bubbling to the surface, like, Nobody wants to be an angry woman. Nobody wants to be a fearful, anxious, perfectionist woman. So look at those and then start asking when you see those, hmm, is there something I'm, I'm trying to control here? Or is there something I feel that I'm losing control of? And, and I think step one for me was just starting to make the connection between the fruits of control in my life that were bubbling to the surface in this core struggle. So I want to unpack this a little bit more because I love how you said that a lot of times we don't realize this and we think that our intentions are good. Um, and I've seen this a lot in my own life and I could name tons of examples where I really just thought I was doing what's best for the family and, you know, I have really good ideas and you should listen to my ideas. Um, so for women who think maybe it might be an issue in their life, but they haven't really identified it yet. I love how you said um, if things are making you angry or if things are making you worried, but are there other things that we can do or warning signs or symptoms, um, kind of like red flags that if we see this in our life, that we might be clued into, it might be an issue of control. Yeah. I mean, I, I say check your relationships. Because, you know, men, men are controlling too, but as women, we're naturally very relational. Like we're very, we're bent for relationships. We're the nurturers, you know, as moms. And um, if you, if you look at the typical family, you know, it's the mom who's saying, hey, don't forget it's so-and-so's birthday or gathering everybody. Like we tend to be the hub relationally. And we also are gifted for communication. We use words and language and, um, and we're, we are perceptive when it comes to relationships. And so since those are the ways we're gifted, that's what we use to leverage um, to get 
control. We use relationships. We use communication. And so I would say if you if you wonder like, okay, do you, I think I'm seeing some signs of this. I, I think I'm seeing anger. I'm seeing anxiety or fear. Um, so check your relationships. Do you see any strain in your relationships? And, you know, I mean, Probably people aren't telling you you're really controlling. I mean, you know, Brittany, you did say your husband mentioned that to you. <laughs> Not in, in my, so many words. <laughs> yeah, and my my husband, I think, really was reluctant to say anything. He was really just trying to keep the peace and please me. You know, he really did want that lamp. <laughs> he wanted to read, you know, and he wanted the light to fall on his page. But you know, if I just would leave him alone, he, he's okay. Uh, so, but but like, I I think if we start sensing there's tension in our in our marriage uh, with our children in the workplace you know controlling women in the workplace uh, that they'll have people who kind of want to just go around them they just want to skip they don't really want to go through them because they know it's going to be a big deal um and, you know this this woman who's really controlling she has to have it her way and she she often will conceal information or try to, you know, leverage different um, relationships in the office place to get what she wants. And so watch for that. Like, do you find that people would prefer to talk to somebody else rather than you? Or they just don't want to get into it or, or maybe they, you know, they withdraw a little bit. They choose just not to talk through an issue with you. They're like, it's okay. Like, I don't want to deal with it. Um, so those are sort of signs that maybe you're taking onto your shoulders more of the burden of control than belongs there. It's not that we're never supposed to be in control of anything but the the thing that we are supposed to be in control of is ourselves not everybody else yeah and if i can add another one too just from my own personal experience um one thing that i found over the years that was like a warning sign for me after the fact i wish i had realized it earlier um but was when i thought that i had lots of good ideas and mm, I couldn't really recall a time when my husband had a really good idea and we did things his way. Not that he didn't, but I was so busy having my own ideas and saying, hey, this is the way that we should do things um, that I didn't let him, I don't know if let him is the right word, but I was so busy doing my thing that I didn't make room for him to do his thing, um, which would be another one too, just leading to if you have a husband or another relationship where they're just really passive, um, are you so busy making all the decisions and doing all the things that they've just kind of like stepped back and said, okay, you know, it's easier to not fight and you just do your thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I can so relate to that, Brittany, you know, especially in parenting because when the, the, the smaller the kids were, the more I was the one managing, you know, when they're babies, I was the one feeding them and taking care of them, changing most of the diapers. And, um, and so I had the expertise and I had the great ideas of how it was all supposed to go. I knew how you were supposed to cut their food up and feed them and all of these different things. And my husband was not going to fight me for the reins. Like he, he just wasn't. Um, and he had very different ways of doing things than I did. You know, he was not nearly as cautious as I was. He was not as safety conscious. You know, I, I remember one time watching one of our toddlers walk into the gas, from the car into a gas station with my husband and he didn't hold his hand. And our son was like six steps behind him. And I like, almost started panicking, like, in the, like, would you watch him? He's going to get hit by a car, you know? And of course, I had a lot to say about that when they got back in the car, and, you know? So, I mean, and, and, um, here's what I've learned. How, how old are your kids, Brittany? Mine are still younger. They are nine and five and three. Well, and let me just give you a little insight from an older sister, just a few steps down, <laughs> down the road. So my kids are now ages 20, 18, and 15, and the younger two are boys. Um, so my 15 year old is six feet tall, 185 pounds. And, um, and so, you know, I think when he looks like a man. He wants to act like a man. And so if I'm like bossing him, there's, there's tension. And so, um, you know, here's what I would say to a young mom. You are going to need that man. <laughs> You're going to need that husband to be fully invested. When your kids are teenagers, they need their dad. And if you have spent the first 
you know, 12, 13, whatever years of that child's life, brushing him aside, saying he has no good good ideas, he, um, you don't need his investment in this child's life. Well, trying to switch at that point is going to be rocky. Like the child has learned to discredit dad and to not... Um, not take, you know, well, mom are, are always knows, always has the best uh, guidance. And so I think um, as our children are really young, inviting, they need a dad. Even if it doesn't feel like they need their daddy as much as they need their mommy, they need a dad investing in them. And so if you're the primary caregiver, which a lot of moms are, I think just inviting, like being intentional and inviting our husbands to say, like saying, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think we should do about this? Like, I'd really like your input on how to discipline, how to, what should we do about entertainment issues? What do you think about, like, these involvements in their lives? Are our kids too busy? Are they, you know, those sorts of things. I, I just see a lot of moms taking over and kind of rolling their eyes and being grumpy about um, him never investing, but like, are you inviting him, you know, or are you just kind of taking control? That's a really good point. I love how you brought up, I hadn't even thought about, you know, kids are going to need their dads more, especially the boys, but the girls too, like as they get into teenage years and making sure that you are setting that precedence now um, so that they have that relationship as they head into those years. Um, even just for me, it's been really fun um, as I have been able to step back more, which I'm sure I still have lots of work to do in this area. Um, but as I've been able to step back more and to see them with their dad and having lots of fun as he can like take the lead and he can be the dad that he wants to be because um, he does want to be this dad and to be a leader and to have fun with them and just take the reins more and I get to sit back. So that's another bonus too. Like there's a lot more times now. I just get to sit back and I don't have to do all the things because when I let him help, like he actually helps when I, you know, stop getting in his way. It's mind blowing. It's so true. It's so true. Like let's give ourselves a break. You know, they will survive <laughs> if they're dead. Yeah. So I completely agree. And I don't want this to come off as negative on my husband at all. He's a wonderful person. Like the only thing I'm trying to say is as moms, we get in the way of the wonderful husbands that we have. But another thing I wanted to ask you, you brought up earlier the issue of your child going into the gas station. What is, what about if it's an issue of safety or even perceived safety? A lot of times, like it's easy to let the little things go, but where do you draw the line or how do you know when you really do need to speak up and when you really just need to sit back and let it be? How can you figure that out? Yeah. So like I, in that scenario, I don't think it would be wrong for me to say like, honey, I mean, when, when you're walking him in the gas station, he's too little. Like, I really think, don't you think you should hold his hand while you're walking in? And, and, you know, there's a way to do that in a respectful, uh, supportive way. And then there's a way to shame him and say, oh my word, I cannot believe, you know, like that sort of way. And I was tending towards that way. Um, and so, you know, I mean, I think with safety, regardless of how old they are, like with our teenagers, you know, there's still things that I worry about safety wise that my husband doesn't. Uh, and so like finding that balance and I don't think it's ever wrong for me to voice my concerns, you know, like, um, like I had way more concern about our teenagers having um, electronic devices in their bedrooms than my, my husband was like, oh, it'll probably be fine. Well then, no, it wasn't. You know, like um, I remember like finding my, I think he was in sixth grade, they got Chromebooks from school. And I found him in the middle of the night at 3 a.m. watching YouTube videos <laughs> and I'm like, what are you doing? You're, it's a school day. I mean, come on. And so, it, you know, some stuff like that surfaced. And, and I think maybe the hands, if we, if we have more of a hands-off approach as moms and let some of the natural pro, uh, problems rise to the surface, then our husbands have a little bit more of an investment in like, I mean, I find that consistently with my husband. He tends to be more passive with like the safety kinds of concerns and the, um, you know, just managing the little things. He's kind of like, oh, let them do, you know, let them, let them do what they want to do. But when something happens, 
then he will invest and he will, you know, like, no, we're not doing that anymore. And he will step up. And, but if I'm the one nagging, not so much, he's more resistant. And so I become a hurdle for him taking that, um, that protective role in our family. So I think as moms, we want to um, invite our husbands to have input, share our concerns, and then back away and say, you know what, God, I need my husband to hear from you more than I need him to hear from me. And I trust you. I trust you with my kids. I trust you with my husband. I trust you with my family. All right. So let me ask you another question, though. Um, up until this point, we have kind of been talking with the assumption that our husbands are good and they're capable and that if we would just kind of step out of their way and stop being such a hurdle to them, that they would make wise decisions. Um, but what about the wife who doesn't have a husband who is going to step into that role. Maybe he's not a believer or maybe he is, but he's just making really poor choices at this time in his life. Um, and that's why she's stepping up to take control because she legitimately does need to be in more of that role. Um, how would you respond to somebody like that? You know what? I haven't experienced that. And so I have, you know, I always just want to say like my, my, opinion can sound really like, you know, you haven't walked in my shoes. So I have so much compassion for a woman who's um, experiencing that. But I have, I have two thoughts. First is, you know, when you're talking about a husband who is like abusive, maybe, um, or has some sort of um, substance abuse going on, um, it, you know, ab abuse is not okay. And so I think, you know, if, if you're in a situation where your husband is there's a harmful situation for you or your children you need to get help you need to invite others into that situation the worst possible thing is for you to keep the circle small you know just you and your little family you're the only ones who know about it like no he needs accountability and so whether it be the law or other people from your your neighborhood your community your church your family others need to be brought into that circle um, but but I just wanted to also talk about the woman whose husband just her his uh, decisions or ideas don't line up because he's not a believer, and that definitely can happen, right? And so let me read um, some verses from First Peter, which are exactly for that woman. Likewise, wives, be subject to your own husbands, so that even if some do not obey the word, they may be won without a word by the conduct of their wives when they see your respectful and pure conduct. As wives and moms, we can sometimes step in and play God. Um, we can replace him. We can think like, well, I'm, I'm representing God. And so of course he would want me to take the reins here. And you know what? That never goes well. When we try to play God, when we try to um, step in, in his place, He's never asked us to do that, and when we do, he's not pleased by that. So, you know what? Our God has uh, so many creative solutions to our problems that you and I have never even considered. Uh, and, and when we're trying to take the reins, we're actually not leaving room for God to do the miraculous things that he wants to in our families. I know that maybe sounds like I've tied it up with a nice pretty bow and <laughs> it doesn't leave room for the chaos and the messiness of life. And again, I have so much compassion for the woman who is um, trying to be a godly influence, especially on children, without a, a godly partner in that process. But um, God sees, he knows, he cares, he is in, He is more invested in your children, I would say, than, than even you are. You can trust him. I think that does wrap it up in a tidy bow a little bit, but it is also a really good perspective, um, whether your husband is abusive or whether your husband is wonderful and you just need to back off a little bit, like just to always keep in mind that God knows what he's doing and he has a plan even if you don't know what it is. And I do have a bunch of articles um, for a woman who's in this situation or something similar to this. I do have a bunch of articles on my website that I will link in the show notes. Um, so definitely make sure if this is something that would apply to you that you go and check those out as well. Um, just articles on what to do if your husband's not a believer, what to do if he's making poor choices, um, 
things like that. I have a bunch of them, so I'll link those as well. But um, before we run out of time today, um, Shannon, I really wanted to talk some more, and I meant to talk about it earlier, um, but I really wanted to talk more about your book, Control Girl, Lessons on Surrendering Your Burden of Control from Seven Women in the Bible. I read it myself. I thought it was very interesting. I loved all the stories, how you just brought the women from the Bible to life. But can you tell us in your own words a little bit more about the book, what it's about, out, who it's for, how it helps, um, all of that. Yeah, sure. So why don't I start by just telling where the, the idea of the book came from. Um, so as God was opening my eyes to this, these issues of control in my life, um, I listened to a sermon by John Piper. I was painting the laundry room. I have no idea why I was like listening to this while I was painting, but I remember he was speaking on Genesis 3, uh, which talks about the curse when Adam and Eve sinned and, and the curse that was spoken over uh, the man and the woman. And there's a little phrase um, that I think speaks to our, our problem with control. God said to Eve, your desire will be for your husband. And um, that, that word desire, it was a desire for control. And so I'm listening to this sermon, uh, and I remember just standing there on the side of my ladder with my paintbrush in my hand, just being stunned by... Like, oh my goodness, well, then that's my problem. Like, that's this has been passed on to me from the beginning of time. Um, God spoke this curse over to Eve, like, your desire is going to be to control your husband. And I'm just living out that curse in, in my marriage, in, my, um, in all my other relationships at work, everywhere. <laughs> I am living out this desire uh, for control. And so, you know, when God opened my eyes to... Like, oh, this is what is going on in my heart. I just have this craving that I cannot satisfy for control. So I, I went looking in the Bible for other women because I thought, well, if it's passed down from Eve, that's pretty much all of us, <laughs> our daughters of Eve. And so I just kind of started from the beginning and, and combed through the scriptures looking for other women in the Bible who struggled with control um, and looking for lessons that I could learn or new perspectives about God and what he thought of all of this or mistakes, you know, that I could avoid. And and I, I started at the beginning and I didn't, I didn't get very far um, before I had, you know, lots of women to study. And so it was more of a question of how many could I include in the book rather than how many could I find uh, in, in scripture. And, and so my book is actually Bible study. Um, the title is Control Girl, Lessons on Surrendering Your Burden of Control from seven women in the Bible. And the seven women that I studied were Eve, Sarah, Hagar, Rebecca, Rachel or Leah, Rachel and Miriam. So before we wrap up today, I just have to ask you, I don't think I, we really dove into this question enough, but for somebody who knows that control is an issue for her, it's something that she falls into regularly, do you have any just like quick tips or advice that you can give us to help us stop this cycle, something that we can use when we feel like, oops, I'm doing it again, what should I do? You know, it takes practice, but it's transformative. And sometimes I, I think of only the big things in my life that I have to surrender, like losing a baby, you know, a pregnancy or um, a, a divorce or so, something really big, like, oh, I have to lay that on the altar and give that to God. But I think the transformation happens in the small moments of the day, um, surrendering, you know, what I'm going to eat for lunch or surrendering what I'm going to say when I'm on the phone or surrendering how I'm going to behave with my children. Am I going to lose my temper or am I going to have self-control? So those little by little by little choices of giving God control in small ways, those that's how we change. That's how we go from control girls to Jesus girls. Uh, and by Jesus girl, I mean somebody who's saying, not my will, but yours be done. You know, that's what Jesus said. And, and that's just a beautiful picture of surrender. Not what I want, but what you want, God, and I'm putting this back in your hands. Well, thank you so much, Shannon, for agreeing to talk to us today. This has given us just so many good insights to think about um, as we go forward. Thank you. Hey, it's been my pleasure. I really enjoyed the conversation. 
All right, so that about does it for today's episode. There was so much more that we could have talked about today, but we're gonna have to call it a day. So if you are ready to dive into this issue even further, there's two things that I want you to do. First of all, go check out Shannon's book. It is called Control Girl, Lessons on Surrendering Your Burden of Control from Seven Women in the Bible, and you can get it just about anywhere. The second thing that I want you to do is go ahead and check out the show notes because I have a bunch of other related links links that I think you're going to find really helpful as well, especially if you are in a situation where you're not sure if you can trust your spouse's judgment as you are learning to let go of control a little bit. And finally, as always, if you have not subscribed to this channel yet, what are you waiting for? I come back every week to share tons of encouragement and super practical action steps to help you be all in in your faith and just to be the amazing Christian women that God is calling you to be. So go ahead and subscribe and I will see you back here again real soon. Bye!